my dear students i am going to talk about dentin dentin is that mineralized tissue that forms the main bulk of the tooth anatomically speaking it forms the junction with the enamel that is dentino enamel junction and junction with the cementum that is cemento dentinal junction if you see its formation in advanced bell stage the dental papilla differentiate into odontoblast that odontoblast give rise to dentin the dentin is covered by enamel in the crown region and cementum in the root region coming to the physical and chemical properties of dentin physical properties the dentin is slightly yellowish in color that imparts color to the tooth because it is visible through the translucent enamel and its color darker with age dentin is much softer than enamel so it exhibits much faster wear and it is harder than cementum and alveolar bond it shows high degree of elasticity which makes it flexible and it allows uh, dentin to function as shock absorber that is the elasticity uh, allows dentin to function as shock absorber for the overlying retin enamel its average density is 2.1 grams per milliliter and it is more radio loosened than enamel due to its less mineral content it is highly permeable due to its presence of dentinal tubules and shows greater compressive strength and lesser tensile strength coming to the chemical properties in dentin 65 percentage is in organic material and 20 percentage is in organic matter and 15 percentage is water inorganic composition of dentin is calcium hydroxy apatite crystals these crystals are calcium poor and carbonate rich much smaller than enamel hydroxy apatite and these crystals are found on and between collagen fibers the organic composition of dentin is mainly collagen type 1 which forms 90 percentage and also contains dentin phosphoproteins proteoglycans leproteins acidic proteins and growth factors and lipids coming to the types of dentin the dentin can be classified based on time of formation that is primary dentin and secondary dentin primary dentin is mantle dentin and circumparental dentin and based on stimulus that evokes dentin formation can be classified as physiological dentin that is primary and again primary and secondary dentin and tertiary dentin or response dentin these are reactive dentin reparative dentin and sclerotic dentin based on relation to dentinal tubules dentin can be classified as peritubular dentin or intratubular dentin intertubular dentin other types of dentin includes predentin interglobular dentin and osteodentin coming to primary dentin by definition this dentin is the dentin which are formed before root completion and it forms a major part of dentin this primary dentin is two types mantle dentin and circumparental dentin coming to mantle dentin mantle dentin is the first formed calcified dentin in the crown underlying dentino enamel junction and this forms the outer part of dentin This is 20 micrometers thickness, and this zone is soft and thus provides the cushioning effect to the tooth. Microscopically, in mandible dentin, these collagen fibers are oriented perpendicular to the dentino enamel junction, and these are loosely packed. And the thicker fibers are larger fibers. These larger collagen bundles extending between the odontoblast and basal region of odontoblast. is called wongos fibers the ground substance derived from dental papilla which lacks phosphorin and here you can see high organic content and less uh, 4 percentage less mineralized than circumbulbal the circumbulbal dentin forms the main bulk of the dentin and this is the dentin which surrounds the pulp and it forms from the pre-existing odontoblast in circumbulbal dentin the organic matrix are closely packed smaller fibers smaller diameter fibers are arranged parallel to the dentino enamel junction and the ground substance also secreted by odontoblast which contain phosphorin and this circumbulbal dentin is 4% more mineralized than mandible 
by definition secondary dentin is that dentin which is formed after root formation or root completion that is primary dentin formation stops at root completion but the dentin formation continues till the death of the pulp tissue that dentin is the secondary dentin as long as the odontoblasts are present in the dentin uh, the pulp uh, in the pulp uh, they continue depositing secondary dentin in comparison with the primary dentin the rate of deposition of secondary dentin is low moreover uh, within the two the rate may be different that is it is high in the roof and floor of the pulp chamber or the coronal pulp if the secondary dentinal tubules are arranged uh, regularly then the secondary dentin will be regular as age advances there will be continuous formation of secondary dentin which in turn reduces the size of the pulp chamber tertiary dentin is deposited only in response to a mechanical injury or pathology in case of external stimulus like caries or trauma when the odontoblasts or their processes get damaged a localized deposition of dentin takes place in an attempt to protect the pulp and seal the zone of injury this is tertiary dentin in comparison with the primary and secondary dentin the rate of deposition of tertiary dentin is much faster due to rapid deposition of tertiary dentin it is less organized like there may be lesser number of dentinal tubules or the dentinal tubules are wider moreover they may have an irregular course sometimes odontoblasts may get entrapped with the dentin making it osteodentin tertiary dentin can be of two types these types are on the basis of the odontoblasts that deposit tertiary dentin in the first type when the external injury occurs the odontoblastic processes get injured but some odontoblasts survive these odontoblasts then start depositing tertiary dentin and this type of tertiary dentin is reactionary dentin in the second type the external injury is severe and causes degeneration of odontoblastic processes and the odontoblasts then from the cell root zone in the pulp the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells that start migrating to the place of degenerated odontoblasts and differentiate into odontoblast these newly differentiated odontoblasts then deposit tertiary dentin uh, and in this type of dentin is called reparative dentin and coming to the structure of dentin the microscopic structure of dentin includes dentinal tubules peritubular dentin intertubular dentin interglobular dentin tom's granular layer structural line and dead tracts coming to dentinal tubules dentinal tubules are the basic structural and functional unit of dentin these are tubular or canal like branched structures extending from pulpal to dj dentinal tubule houses the protoplasmic processes of odontoblasts dentinal tubules are not straight but have a gentle s shape there are two curvatures in opposite directions these two uh, curvatures are called primary curvature the curvature close to the pulp has convexity towards the root apex and whereas the curvature away from the pulp has its convexity towards the occlusal or incisor surface moreover there are two areas where dentinal tubules don't show this curvature but run in a straight line first in the cusp or the incisor ridge area and second type is in the root apex apart from two primary curvatures minute curvatures are present all along the course of dentinal tubules called the secondary curvatures which can be well appreciated at higher magnification all dentinal tubules any part of the dentin ends in both surfaces at 90 degrees be it in the pulpal end or outer end at dj or cj the diameter of the dentinal tubule is not constant they are wider at the pulpal end about 4 microns 
and narrower at dendrine enamel junction at 1 micron giving the ratio of 4 is 2 the contents of dentinal tubule includes odontoblast process non myelinated nerve fibers dentinal fluid and lamina limitans the odontoblast process odontoblasts are located just beneath the dentin and their cytoplasmic process extends from the odontoblast into the dentinal tubules called the odontoblast process sometimes these odontoblast processes may cross the dentino enamel junction and reach the enamel and they are called enamel spindles and the odontoblast processes contain a fine network of microfilaments and microtubules ribosomes endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria lysosomes and microvesicles next is periodontoblastic space this is the space between the odontoblastic process and peritubular dentin which contains dentinal fluid or dental lymph partially derived from pulpal capillaries movement of dentinal fluid thought to be the reason for dentin sensitivity next is lamina limitans inner organic lining of calcified tubule is the lamina limitant and this is seen only in demineralized sections these are thin organic membrane high in glycosaminoglycans and some suggest that it is the plasma membrane of odontoblast peritubular dentin is the dentin that immediately surrounds the dentinal tubules it lines the inner wall of dentinal tubule except near the pulp hence it is called the intratubular dentin also it is 9% more mineralized than intertubular dentin the width of the peritubular dentin is more near the dentino enamel junction and decreases in pulpward direction this is absent in predentin and interglobular dentin in ground section it appears more lighter compared to intertubular dentin due to hypermineralization and seen as a clear transparent ring around the each tubule lumen in decalcified sections this peritubular dentin is lost and is represented as a space because of which the dentinal tubules appears larger peritubular dentin formation continues throughout life at a very slow rate which narrows the lumen of dentinal tubules and causes obliteration this results in the formation of sclerotic dentin this change in refractive index of dentin is called transparent dentin here you can see the transparency of dentin next is intertubular dentin this intertubular dentin forms the main bulk of dentin and it present between dentinal tubules this as i told you earlier this is less mineralized than peritubular dentin and the thickness of intertubular dentin is highest near dentino enamel junction where dentinal tubules are widely separated and it contains type 1 collagen and hydroxy apatite crystals the collagen fibers are arranged perpendicular to the dentinal tubules although it is mineralized this intertubular dentin is retained after decalcification whereas peritubular dentin is lost next is interglobular dentin the mineralization of dentin begins in small globular areas that fail to coalesce into homogeneous mass this result in the formation of hypomineralized areas between the globules these zones are known as interglobular spaces or interglobular dentin and this uh, forms this mainly seen in the crown portion of tooth in the circumbulbar dentin just below the mantle dentin and follows the incremental pattern dentinal tubules pass uninterruptedly through this interglobular dentin and thus demonstrating defect of mineralization not the matrix formation it has got a star shape in ground sections the organic matrix in the interglobular dentin is lost and that area will be filled with air hence it appears as darker under transmitted light and the rate of occurrence is commonly mainly uh, seen in the cervical third then middle third 
then intercuspal area, then coronal third. Next, Tom's granular layer. This layer is seen adjacent to cementum and increase in amount from cementoenamel junction to the root apex. This granular layer represents the looped terminal portion of dentinal tubule in the root dentin and similar to the branching and beveling of dentinal tubules in dentinoenamel junction. Highly layer of Hopewell Smith present outside this granular layer and these are structureless layer and it bonds the cementum to dentin. Next is pre-dentin. This initially lay down dentin matrix before mineralization and it lines the pulpal surface of dentin and this pre-dentin seen throughout life and 2 to 6 micrometers thickness. As the collagen fibers undergo mineralization at the pre-dentin dentin junction, the pre-dentin forms dentin and new layer of pre-dentin forms sarcum pulpally also. Coming to the structural lines in dentin. Dentinogenesis is a rhythmic process with alternating periods of activity and rest. The incremental lines represent rest period in dentin formation and these lines are oriented perpendicular to the dentinal tubules. There are different types of incremental lines. The incremental lines associated with matrix deposition and mineralizations are called von Eppner's line, Anderson line, Condor line of Owen, and Neonatal line. Incremental lines associated with the primary curvature of dentinal tubules are called the Schrieger line. Von Eppner's lines are the lines which are perpendicular to the dentinal tubules, appears as fine lines or striations in dentin. These are the von Eppner's lines. Each line reflects the daily rhythmic deposition of dentine matrix, which indicates growth pattern of dentine. Anderson's lines are the lines which are 16 to 20 micrometers apart, coarser and uh, long period lines. Between two long period of lines, the, there are 6 to 10 pairs of short period lines. These are the Anderson lines. Then contour line of oven are the accentuated Warner line due to the disturbance in the matrix and mineralization process. Schrieger lines are the peak of primary curvature coincide to form broad bands in longitudinal sections and it appears less appears in cross sections but seen as broad concentric bands in circumpalpal dentine. Next is neonatal line is uh, dentin is formed partially before, these are called prenatal dentin and partially after birth, these are called postnatal dentin and these are separated by accentuated contour line, is called neonatal line and these are uh, seen in deciduous teeth and in first permanent molars. Dentino enamel junction is the junction between dentin and enamel. DEJ is scalloped and its convexity is facing towards dentin and concavity is facing in towards enamel. Cementodentino junction is the junction between dentin and cementum. This is relatively straight in permanent teeth and scalloped in deciduous teeth. The tracks are the uh, seen in ground section of normal dentin. The odontoblast process disintegrate and the empty tubules are filled with air. They appear as black in transmitted light and white in reflected light. These empty dentinal tubules are called dead tracks. Loss of odontoblast process occur in teeth containing vital pulp as a result of caries, attrition, aeration, caries, cavity preparation and uh, erosion. These are the dead tracks. This represent empty tubules filled with air. These are due to the degeneration of odontoblast process due to caries, attrition, erosion, etc. Seen in ground section of teeth. This appears as black in transmitted light and white in reflected light. And commonly seen in older teeth in areas of narrow pulp horns. And this uh, formation of the tract decreases sensitivity of teeth. 
Now let's see what are the theories of bending sensitivity. Exposed dentin is very sensitive. There are three main theories which explain the dentin sensitivity. These are direct neural stimulation theory, transduction theory, fluid or hydrodynamic theory. According to direct neural stimulation theory, the nerve endings present in the dentinal tubules are directly stimulated and give rise to dentin sensitivity. But there are some drawbacks in this theory. Even though the nerve endings are visible in dentinal tubule, they are confined to inner dentine and absent in outer dentine. And topical application of local anesthetic to the surface of dentine do not eliminate dentine sensitivity. So this theory is not accepted well. According to transduction theory, various stimuli stimulate odontoblastic process and which conduct impulse to the nerve endings located in the inner dentine. There are also some drawbacks in this theory. The neurotransmitter vesicles are absent in odontoblastic process and there are no synaptic relationship between odontoblastic process and nerve endings. So this theory also not accepted well. But the most accepted theory is fluid or hydrodynamic theory. The tubular nature of dentin permits fluid movement inside this tubule. Various stimulus such as heat, cold, mechanical pressure affect fluid movement in the dentinal tubules. This fluid movement is inward or outward movement. The outward movement of fluid is caused by heat, osmotic pressure and drying. Inward movement of fluid is caused by cold stimuli. Fluid movement stimulates pain mechanism by mechanical disturbance of nerves and associated with the odontoblastic process. Let's see what are the age and functional changes in dentin. As age advances, the thickness of dentin increases and the position of peritubular dentin increases and will lead to the obliteration of dentinal tubules and hence permeability of dentin decreases. This is more harder and brittle with age. There are shortening of odontoblastic process and decrease of sensitivity, detract formation, secondary dentin formation, sclerotic dentin or transparent dentin formation is seen as age advances, tertiary dentin and reparative dentin formation also increases as age advances. Now let's see what are the clinical considerations. The rapid penetration and spread of canes in the dentine is the result of tubular system in dentine. The dentinal tubules forms a passage for invading bacteria that may reach the pulp. Thank you. Thank you all for listening.